While in Ireland, avoid teens wearing tracksuits and seagulls, and also avoid seagulls wearing tracksuits because that could also end very badly. Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Chisum and I'm here to give you a definitive guide to moving to Ireland. And why do I feel qualified enough to do so? Because I did it like two years ago. I moved in the middle of the pandemic and I spent a year and a half in Ireland and I'm here to make sure you all do not make the same mistakes I did. So let's get started. If you're moving to Ireland, you're probably moving to if you're moving to Ireland, you're probably moving to one of the major cities in Ireland. If you're smart enough, you move to Galway. If you're slightly demented, you move to Cork. And if there's something pathologically wrong with you, you move to Dublin. That's why I moved to Dublin. So Dublin is the capital city of Ireland. It's basically the center of trade, commerce, and basic everything that happens in Ireland ends up happening in Dublin. Not everything, but most things. That is where I'll start off with Dublin. But before we even start off at the city, let's start off with the fact that like Ireland, the island, is divided into two. You have Northern Ireland, which is part of the United Kingdom. And then you have the Republic of Ireland. So when I mean Ireland, I mean the Republic of Ireland. With regards to the weather in Ireland, you get 300 days of summer throughout the year. And by 300 days, I mean two. And by two, I mean two minutes. So if you move to Ireland, anticipate that you have rainy days, dark days, because that's just the name of the game and the weather there. And don't even bother bringing an umbrella because if you bring an umbrella, the wind will basically make a fool out of you in public and nobody wants that. Photos, put a bit of smoke, smoke in your face. So when you're moving to Ireland, just get yourself a really nice winter coat or a really nice like waterproof coat and a pair of boots that can stand the water. I got myself a super dry jacket and I got myself a pair of Doc Martens. I actually still have that pair right now. Let me go get it. These are my Doc Martens. I still have them. I don't know why I showed you a shoe, but that's what I wore in Ireland and it basically kept me from getting wet. With regards to getting set up in Ireland, obviously you need a bank account, especially if you're coming from a non-European country. Thought moving to Ireland was going to be hard. Getting a bank account is much harder. In order to open a bank account in Ireland, you need to provide your proof of income, proof of address. You need to also provide the soul of your first unborn child, your left kidney, right lung, and every semblance of sanity you have left. Opening a bank account in Ireland is not easy. I use Bank of Ireland, and I remember when I was talking to the person at the front desk, and they said that Ireland is one of the hardest countries to open a bank account in. So anticipate that that process will not be easy, but once you get it done, you don't have to deal with it again. And if you thought opening a bank account was hard, you should try to find housing, which is kind of a catch-22, right? You need a proof of address, and in order to have a proof of address, you need to be able to sign a lease and pay your rent and lease, and then you need to have a bank account to do that. But Dublin currently has a housing crisis. Not enough houses are just generally being built in Dublin, and Dublin is a city that has grown significantly over the past couple of years. And that means that there is literally just not enough housing in Dublin as a whole. Things are not okay, and the government have got to stop acting as though they are. We cannot say it's okay when tenants are paying extortionate rent. Some people theorize that it's because um, venture funds from um, foreign countries are actually coming up and buying up properties in Dublin, but anticipate that finding um, housing in Dublin will be very difficult. And especially if you're a student or a foreigner who hasn't been in the system and who doesn't know where to live. And with regards to finding your housing, if you look at Dublin, you notice that River Leafy goes through the middle of it. And Dublin is kind of divided into distinct zones. It's not kind of, it is divided into distinct zones. Where the northern part of Dublin is labeled with odd numbers, so one, three, five, seven, and the even parts is labeled with even numbers, so two, four, six, eight. You should know what odd and even numbers are. And the more bougie part of Dublin is the southern part. That's where you have all the embassies, that's where you have all the trendy restaurants and all of that, so anticipate that if you want to live in Dublin 2, Dublin 4, you, you'll be paying a pretty penny. That's also where a lot of the tech companies are. To foreign companies, Dublin is kind of a tax haven. It's actually one of the cheapest places to pay taxes, I think, globally. But for individuals, Dublin is far from a tax haven. Dublin does have a progressive tax system where I think you pay 20 something percent on the first portion of your income, then above that you pay a, a higher percentage. And the threshold to actually cross into the higher percentage is not that high. So anticipate that you'll be paying a lot in taxes if you move to Dublin or Ireland as a whole. Ireland is expensive. 
And when I mean Ireland, I mean specifically Dublin, but Ireland as a whole, that if you're moving to Dublin, anticipate to pay a decent amount and not just taxes, but in cost of living, specifically housing because housing crisis. With regards to healthcare, some people complain that Irish healthcare is expensive. Before living in Ireland, I lived in America. So my expectations of healthcare affordability were very low. And during my time in Ireland, I had numerous gastrointestinal issues. So I had to get an MRI, an ultrasound, a colonoscopy and an endoscopy. And because I used VHI health insurance, I actually ended up paying nothing for all those four procedures. Actually, scratch that, I paid for the ultrasound and that ended up being a hundred and something euros, but like the MRI, the colonoscopy and endoscopy were completely free with my insurance. So some people complain that compared to other European countries, Ireland's healthcare is expensive. However, I found it to be very good and I have no complaints about it. This is Ireland, so expect pop culture. This is just part of the way of life there where like on a regular evening that people are at the pub just having a good time. Another funny thing is that like Ireland is one of the places in the world where tea is drank the most. Like British people love tea, but Ireland consumes the second largest amount of tea in the world. So you know how Berry's tea is meant to be the best thing since sliced bread? and the invention of fire. Well, it is, so we'll get some berries tea. With regards to diversity, Ireland is actually a very diverse country. Within Ireland, if you take out the non-Irish people, you at least hear like a million Irish accents in Ireland. I lived in Dublin throughout my stay in Ireland, so I was used to hearing foreign accents. So people across the European Union and people not from the European Union, you'd hear every kind of accent in Dublin. But if you were looking at specifically Irish accents, you'd also hear a plethora of different accents depending on which part of Ireland you're from. So anticipate hearing a specific difference from people who are more in the northern part of Ireland versus the southern part of Ireland, but still, you're gonna hear lots of different accents. Ireland has unique sports that are only distinct to Ireland, such as hurling or Irish dance, and Irish dance is not a sport. But basically, there are things that are distinct to Ireland that are part of their culture. And while there, you should try to engage in those things and learn a lot about them because you probably not see them much outside Ireland, or at least I didn't hear about them prior to moving to Ireland. And finally, if you move to Ireland, try to explore outside Dublin. Ireland has so much more to offer outside Dublin. So if you're in Dublin, get on a train, get in a car and go see the rest of Ireland because Ireland is such a lovely and wonderful country. This country is full of some of the nicest people I've met in all my years traveling. It has such a different landscape depending on which part of the country you're in. Also, it's English speaking. So if you're from an English speaking country, it's very easy to get around. And also Irish people are distinctively undeniably the best people on earth according to the world happy people ranking which i just made up because that ranking does not exist but i made it up so it's valid and take this opportunity to see the rest of ireland explore have a fun time there it will not be easy having this transition especially if you're doing so for work and you don't have that many friends however it does get easier over time what to avoid while in ireland while in ireland avoid teens wearing track suits and seagulls and also avoid seagulls wearing tracksuits because that could also end very badly. But that is all for me. If you would like to see me compare my experience living in Ireland to my experience living in the US, a link to that will be below, and I will see you all next time. Thank you.